Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin and today we're looking at the Detroit Mint Mechanic Automatic Chronograph Bullhead which is gold which is gold plated not gold plated PVD plated in this gold color with a black dial. Also the indices are gold colored as well and the handset is also gold colored so Oh, and the buckle and tang as well. So nice uh, coordination there. Pushers and crown. Everything metal is gold colored except for the case back. MSRP for this watch is $475. Now let me show you what the else comes with this watch for that price. We'll zoom out here. Alright, so it also comes with this uh, canvas watch roll. It's a nice watch roll comes with this tool which is for adjusting or well, pushing out the split pins on the bracelet and also you have a uh, spring bar tool here to remove the leather strap. I'll just hold the bracelet up to the watch and uh, we'll see how it looks. I have another similar looking watch with the bracelet installed. We can look at that as well. But um, yeah I would leave it on the leather strap. This this bracelet in that case is a bit too much gold for me but if you like gold colored this will be right up your alley so as I mentioned this is adjusted by split pins and those split pins are uh, color matching as well so it is a nice touch it is a butterfly clasp and there's no uh, half lengths or micro adjust so you'll probably have to set this up for a little bit looser of a fit but not a big deal Yeah, nice little watch roll here. Also, it includes two extra spring bars. Okay, let's set this off to the side. We'll take a closer look at the watch. All right, so this watch was inspired by racing bullhead chronographs from the late 60s and early 70s. They were created to allow access to the crown and the pushers during uh, racing and also to prevent the pushers and crown from uh, hitting the back of your wrist or the back of your hand while on wrist. I'll show that in a little bit here. It does have a sapphire crystal with AR coating applied to the underside. So let's get the chronograph running here. So you push this top pusher here, top left pusher. Chronograph second has been activated. Right subdial is your running second, so that's always running as long as you have uh, energy in the mainspring, as long as it's wound up. And then the left subdial here is your 30 minute counter for the chronograph. You see on the dial here Detroit Mint Mechanic, 100 meter water resistance, and yes, this is an automatic watch. So 10 ATM, this 100 meter water resistance. This is all stainless. Like I said, it is PVD coated gold and Detroit Mint. So let's see if the second hand is snapped over yet. We can take a look at the indices while we're waiting. So the second hand will pass 12 o'clock and then uh, this minute sub dial will tick over to one minute. There we go. It's nice that the, the indices also match the case color. There's a good look at it there. These are applied indices. Silver subdials are set below the surface a little bit here. And you have a tachymeter scale around the perimeter. So let's stop this second hand and then we'll reset it. And then the second hand will snap back. There we go. Pushers are a little stiff. The starting it is stiffer than uh, Stopping it. Then let's just reset it here again. All right, let's look at it from the back side. Neat looking movement in here. This is a clone of uh, ETA 7750 movement. Uh, it's been modified to uh, rotate it, the, rotate the subdials 90 degrees, and also to have only the two subdials instead of three. 
So it's more like a 7750 or an early 77, I'm sorry, it's more like a 7753 or an early 7750 movement. 30 joules and 8 beats per minute. Uh, sorry, 8 beats per second. Yeah, 8 beats per minute would be pretty slow. So anyway, you can see the movement in here. Alright, let's uh, start this and stop it from back here. See what we can see with the gears and levers moving around. Hopefully the rotor won't get in the way. There we saw a bunch of stuff moving around in there. We'll stop it. You'll see these th same things moving again. Start. Stop. Alright, you'll see more with the reset. There we go. Let's start it one more time. Be nice if the rotor wasn't so big. Yeah, it should be ticking away. There we go. All right, let's uh, stop it again. I don't think we'll see anything in the from here. Oh, that was a reset. All right, now we'll reset it. Yeah, very neat. I uh, really like looking at the mechanical movements, see how they work, and uh, just see see what we can see in there. Okay, dimensions of this watch. Without the crown, lug to lug it is 46. Case diameter, 40 millimeter. Case thickness, it is a bit thick at 14.8 millimeter. Then lug width is 20. And the strap doesn't really taper down all that much, so it's 20 to 20. The sign crown is 6.5 millimeter. This is just a push-pull crown. It's not screwed down, so I kind of question the 100 meter water resistance. So just to be on the safe side, don't go swimming with this watch. Uh, this does have a ghost date position. So first position out, this would be a date set. Uh, this position here, you can hand wind the movement. I can't really show you that because the strap gets in the way. Let's see if I can try. Right up here, that gear should move. Yep, there we go. See it moving a little bit. There we go. So yeah, it's one complaint with this watch. Yes, the pushers are out of the way. It feels very comfortable on wrist, but if you were to hand wind it, the strap kind of gets in the way, but it's not too bad, not too terrible. You can hear that or not. So yeah, let's get this thing on wrist. I think I mentioned this as a signed crown with the D there, Detroit Mint D. Probably can't use the old English D. I think the Tigers have a copyright on that, trademark, whatever. Yeah, it's nice that the buckle and tang matches. Uh, it does kind of prevent you from, not necessarily prevent you, but it makes it a little more difficult to put uh, aftermarket straps on this unless you can find some with the gold colored buckle and tang. Actually, you might be able to get a spring bar tool and take this off and uh, use that too. This is signed Detroit Mint. I do like the color, the white stitching, and then this red stitch down here, kind of some, something different. Yes, yeah, so here we go on my six and a half inch wrist. I am down to the second from the tightest hole position here. And this is a little easier to be able to start and stop with. You can just use your index finger instead of with a standard chronograph. You'd have this start button here and then stop would be here. Can't really twist my arm around that far to start and stop it. So let me know what you guys think of this watch. Now I'll hold I'll hold the bracelet up to it. Oh actually speaking of that I'll show you this other watch that has a bracelet installed. And this gold one I don't know. I just I wouldn't do it but 
if you, if you like cold if you like the gold color um, more power to you definitely a lot of gold here so yeah kind of get you an idea how that would look and then here's a similar looking Detroit Mint chronograph. This one's a little bit thicker, but I did install it on the bracelet for the video and I've left it on, but I will be removing it. Actually, I'll be sending these watches out here pretty soon to uh, another guy in the Random Rob group. This one also has a date on it. So anyway, I'll uh, compare these two in a video as well. Here's a quick look at how it will kind of look on a bracelet. And I also have this silver version of the bullhead, which I'll show you here. I would choose a silver over the rose gold. Or, well, yeah, actually, I would say this is rose gold not really all that yellow. I actually don't own any... I do not own a single gold watch. Everything is stainless steel. The dial colors almost look different, but... Pretty sure they're the same color. Something going on with the gold reflection, maybe. All right, let's get this on wrist. I can't remember if I had it on wrist or not. Yeah, I think I did actually. All right, let's uh, pause the video. Oh, before we do that, uh, if you could hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet, like the video and leave a comment below. Greatly appreciate it. All right, we'll uh, check out the loom. It won't be a fair battle. The SKX will definitely uh, be brighter, but just for reference sake. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, so on the left, we do have the Detroit Mint Bullhead Chronograph looms. It's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not a dive watch, so I, I think it's, it's okay for what you're getting here. Actually, you know what? I think I'll do the wrist shot again. I don't think I did the zoomed out uh, wrist shot here. So, yeah, the loom's okay. All right, let's let's uh, let's turn the lights back on and we'll zoom out and uh, see how it looks on my six and a half inch wrist. Actually, I'll show it next to the SKX here again. Let's get you a size reference. A 40 millimeter diameter versus 42. Actually, lug to lug on these should be very similar. SKX might be about a millimeter taller on the lug. Oop. Still working. It dropped off my wrist by about an inch. All right, let's uh, see how it looks zoomed out. A little bit different perspective. Let me know what you guys think of the color. I'm curious. Kind of a fun looking watch too. Definitely different. Whenever I put these on, I think it's an alien, uh, alien head or something, you know? Eyeballs and horns or something but anyway uh, that will conclude the video as always thank you for taking the time and thank you for watching